It's been pretty darn cold in South Florida the last couple of days. So cold that iguanas are falling from the sky. Now I don't really care about iguanas falling from the sky, but I do care about temperatures dropping. Because when temperatures drop, I get closer to the conditions that create a freeze. And if we get a freeze, all our avocados die, all our mangoes die, all our other fruit dies, and we got nothing for the year. The science behind how these frosts occur fascinates me. But I'm not like, I ain't, I ain't like a, I ain't a fucking meteorologist, so it's a little hard for me to explain, but, but generally speaking, there's, there's three main variables you have to watch. Air temperature, wind speed, and humidity. Now that's oversimplified. There's, let me get this vine here. There's other factors like pressure and air pressure and things like that, but essentially you got water vapor contained in the air, right? That water vapor wants to get to a liquid form. And at a certain temperature, it does. It condenses. We know that as do, right? When you go out of your house in the morning and the hood of your car is covered in, covered in, in, a, in a sheet of water, right? That's dew. If you live up north, that dew might freeze. We call that frost. And there's two types of frost. One type of frost, the water vapor in the air condenses to water, lands on a surface. Then later on, the air temperature drops to below 32 degrees and that water freezes. A second type of frost, known as Hoar's frost, H-O-A-R-S, frost, is where the water goes directly from a vapor to a solid. And that's that kind of frost when you go out in the morning and it looks like a very thin layer of snow, right? There's crystals and flakes. It looks like uh, Jack Frost sprayed like a, like a frost ray or something down the street. When you look at the weather report, in my case in Homestead, Florida, it's the temperature at Homestead Air Force Base. But it's also the temperature as measured from a device that sits about five feet high at Homestead Air Force Base. Well, guess what? The air temperature at three feet high might be a little lower or a little higher than the temperature at five feet, than the temperature at seven feet, than the temperature at 15 feet. That's called a microclimate. And avocado trees have actually evolved to take advantage of this phenomenon of microclimate. This little guy, for example, I'm at the trunk of an avocado tree. Look, at, I got a few inches deep here of leaves and branches and bark and dead weeds and all that kind of stuff. And it's rotting. It's rotting below the tree. The process of decomposition actually creates heat. And that heat rises up into the canopy and the tree stores that warm air. In addition, the sun is blasting, especially in South Florida, right? The sun is blasting all day long, heating up the ground. And that ground stores heat. Then at night, the sun goes down, the air temperature drops, but the ground itself still has heat. And that heat wants to rise. And as that heat rises up out of the ground, the trees also catch it and add to the warm air that they created themselves. So as long as I see air temperatures up above 32 and wind speeds very low or at zero and a dew point that's lower than the air temperature, I could go to bed feeling pretty safe. And that's exactly what happened this week. The conditions didn't exist for a, for a freeze. But let's say, let's say they did exist. Let's say the, the three variables got together and we were gonna have a freeze. Well, you can't do nothing about the weather, right? Wrong. Again, because of the phenomenon of microclimates, I could come out here and fire up this diesel pump and get my, my irrigation going, right? So if the air temperature is 30 to 32 degrees, 31 degrees, whatever, my water that's eight to 14 feet below the surface is probably around 60, 61, 62 degrees. And when I start spraying that stuff down on all these trees, it actually raises the temperature. I'm actually controlling the weather in the microclimate of this grove. In addition, by filling the air up with water and mist, I'm saturating the air with more water vapor, which changes the dew point. So I'm, control I'm actually tweaking two of the variables that determine whether or not I'm gonna have a frost. So Tuesday night, before I went to bed, I had a decision to make, right? Am I gonna run this pump all night? Am I gonna blow a couple hundred dollars in diesel? put the wear and tear on my engine, put the wear and tear on my, on my sprinklers and all that stuff, right? Or am I just gonna go to bed and sleep soundly? Well, I gotta look at all those variables and I gotta decide what I'm, what I'm gonna do. But I have a much easier technique than that. 
I got a guy down the road that's got a couple hundred acres. I got a person up this road that's got a couple hundred acres. If I walk outside at midnight and I hear them running their pumps, I know I gotta run mine, because those people know their shit. Now conditions were such that we didn't have to run the pump all night, we didn't get a freeze. Everything is safe, you'll have plenty of fruit for next year. If you wanted to get yourself some fruit, say for the Super Bowl or something like that, I can't help you out, I'm actually picked clean this year. Prices were high and there was a high demand and my fruit went fast. But if you want to support me and go out to my website and get one of these cool t-shirts, it's guacfarm.com. G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M.com. Go on out there, get yourself a sticker or a t-shirt, and I'll see you on the next video.